What's up? On today's episode of The Husting Agent, we have badass coach, Mr. John Cheplak. John coaches some of the top teams and brokers in multiple countries. He's a great dude, my own personal business coach. I always get so much out of hearing him speak, whether it's on a call or seeing him on stage. I know you will too. Check it out. All right, folks, today I have the esteemed Mr. <laughs> John Cheplak. Uh, I want to call him a super coach I, and just a great guy, good person to have in your corner. And I'm really grateful to even have your time, John. So thanks for being on, bro. Well, you're a pretty humble dude. And so uh, I know it's a big deal to spend time with you. So I brought my smart water. <laughs> So um, hopefully I'll be smart for uh, you and all the listeners today. Yes, sir. So, uh, you know, and we talk all the time. I mean, um, just for the listeners out there who don't know that. But, you know, you're, re you're international. You're talking to teams in different countries like Canada and all over the, the United States. Mm -hmm. So what are some, like, resounding themes you're seeing throughout both, both countries? Well, I, I think it's, uh, here's the big thing that, that's, that's shown up is certainly there's a, a way that, that we have to do things that has changed, which, you know, the real estate industry is a tech savvy industry and, and uh, we, we've got, you know, all the things at our disposal and ultimately it's if people take action. But the ultimate piece is I'm seeing the people that, uh, I mean, listen, it's a struggle for everyone. But, but what I'm seeing, the people that are settling into it and, and, and working through it in a, in a way that's better than they thought, were the people that understood that it, you, know, you can't just have knowledge, you can't just have a, a new tool, a new software, um, because that's, that's the tactical part of it, which is competency. Um, you know, a new script or a dialogue, we'll talk about that in a second. We've joked about that, or I have at least. Um, and, and, and so um, there's, there's the ones that uh, have, have really been tilted just in that space and, and brilliant people, don't get me wrong. But then there's the other leaders and whether it's a leader of a team, a leader of a real estate brokerage or an agent, agents are leaders in the marketplace. I don't care how much business you do, you are, you're impacting you know, someone's life for many, many years and helping them in a decisioning process. The people that don't just, you know, so, and, and you've been around forever and, and sit with, talk with, and are one of the best competency wise. You know, people talked about nurture and people talked about community and people talked about uh, relationships. But I think in my opinion, no judgment, because we're all getting better. I'm getting better every day. But I think that what you're finding is, is the people, th there's this awakening to the people that really tilted in the tactical space. They were really tilted in the um, competence space, the skill space, and and but maybe weren't as connected in the emotional space. And and, and whether you're an individual agent, a team leader, broker, owner, manager, um, even in the mortgage industry too, who I get to work with, is the ones that weren't connected there are really struggling, really struggling. And and I watched it with all due respect. I'm I'm the product of, um, and I always like to honor the people that have come before me, the great coaches and trainers that have paved the way for a guy like me to get an opportunity. But it's interesting to watch them have to flip and say, "Hey, you need to be sympathetic, and you need to have empathy, and <laughs> check in to people." When when it was kind of laughed at, um, and, and maybe they didn't laugh at it. I don't know, but I've I've heard some of them, you know, mention that you know this isn't like me. Well. Um, a bulk of the industry maybe said those words, but never operated that way. Sure. It's, it's the group that has truly been committed to emotional connection. The group that has really been connected to community, a group that has been connected to all the things that we know, Sunit. Um, and it's why we get along well is, is, is that you're just, you're a real dude. And, and um, you know, I've been able to interact with your agents and see how they're connected to you is, um, it's the ones that are wake up every day if you're a leader and you're really concerned with the opportunities for your people and then concerned with how they, the experience they create, not just the transaction. It's, it's the people that are connected to the heart first, attached to the process first and the outcome later. You know, that was kumbaya language about 30, 60 days ago. Pretty yeah, interesting. Well, uh, <laughs> It, it, it's not anymore. So, so what I would say is the people that have, have 
always been that way. This is, yeah, there was a transition, but they're getting through it. And, and some of them just doing bananas. We were talking about that before. Um, yes. The ones that are, and, and I understand in the, in the non-essential environments, um, they're paralyzed naturally because they can't do it. But there's a big group of agents that are paralyzed because it's, they want to go to, they're, they're hearing people say, hey, just check in. Um, and, 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 and just personally with people and don't even bring up a real estate transaction, but they, they, they're so programmed to that sales language that they revert to it and they're struggling. So that's, those are the two camps that I see, Cindy. Um, and there's another camp, there's a few other camps too. There's people that, um, that I think, you know, we're, we're in a, we're in a world of skills and emotions and people have always thought it was skills most. Um, but now we've got this emotional thing that's bigger than ever, that emotion of uncertainty. Um, you've got people that financially, and with all due respect, no judgment, and, and what I hopefully can lend to people is you've got some people that financially weren't prepared. I don't know that I woke up and said I was prepared for a, a coronavirus to hit, but financially, you know, I make choices so that when things I'm, I'm fine. Right. Sure. Um, there's a lot of people and, and, and they're not singled out. Don't judge yourself. But 70% of all Americans have less than a thousand dollars in the bank. Well, we can do simple math. That's going to include some real estate agents. Yeah. And and, 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 so there's some people that what I want to say to them is, is um, okay. Maybe it doesn't feel okay, but let that go and know this. Um, and, and, and so it's mindset stuff. Know this, that right now you may think that your economy is the financial reports, the interest rate, the stock market. Um, you may think your economy is the number of sales. Um, you may think your economy is the circumstance of the virus, but, um, and, and, and money's going to make it, you know, make your economy, but it's not. Know this, know that there's two economies and it's the people that know that my ultimate economy is my action because I've had the experience of my actions <laughs> affecting my economy and the economy out there was fine. <laughs> Um, you know, so, um, I, I think that that's the encouragement that I give people. So, so it's the people that are really quite frankly, either had that emotional intelligence, that emotional maturity, that importance of connection, had that in place or really shifted in what is uh, can be a traumatizing time for people, an emotional time for people that have really said, wait a minute, if I don't get my emotions right and in check, this isn't going to work out good for me. So that's, that's what I'm seeing from a, you know, at a, at an overarching space. So, you know, let's talk about that. And I'm thinking because for the longest time I was a sales, sales, sales guy. <laughs> right. And it's been a gradual thing for me personally to try and change that mind shift. Right. Like, something else that you say when people used to say nurture, there's been pounce. I'm guilty. I'm the pouncer, right? So for people that are listening who have been a sales and transactional person, and I know this is probably way broader than we could even cover if we talked every day for, for a month, but how would somebody tra begin to transition to that emotional way? Sure. Well, what I would first say is, um, and, and one thing I'm not um, um, ignoring is, is I do understand because I work with people like you and your peers and Justin and Chris and Gary and the Lorries and the Veronicas. And I don't want to leave anyone out who, who, who know lead gen lead management stuff. All that stuff. They know it better, better than me. Um, and, and, and I have no problem in saying that I don't play the guru. They're the brilliant ones. And I'm fortunate right along. But, but what I do know in working with people like you and, and, and all of them and many others is, is I do know the importance of the cadence. I do know, do know the importance of the frequency. But I want to share something with people is this is um, micromanagement. Wait a minute. We were talking about legion. Stay with me. It's human interaction. Micromanagement isn't based on how often you check in with someone. Ambushing isn't based on how often you call someone or contact them. It's based on how it feels. It's how it feels. So, so that's the first thing I, uh, hopefully that, that I can help people discern is, 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 you know, are you informing me? Are you supporting me? Are you seeking first to understand? So, so just, I, I think those two discernments, and I hope that helps a leader, 
you know, because you know what a leader's doing, a buyer, an agent's trying to get a buyer to sell or to, to enroll them to work with them, you know, and, and make yeah. some choices. Well, a leader's trying to get an agent to work with them to enroll in the framework and the choices so that they can get a result that they said they want. The buyer said they want a result. So they're very parallel. So the number one way to do is first of all, you got to accept it. You, you, you got to, you just got to, and, and hopefully if, if it's maybe, well, I hope because I hear all the other coaches out saying, Hey, just be check in just personal level. How are you? I'm like, okay, good. Right. <laughs> you know how it goes, you know, cause listen, and I'm not being some guy saying I'm the one that do, I'm the one that's always said, drop your, you've heard me for years say, well, we've known each other a couple of years now, drop your calls to action, drop it. Yep. Don't even talk about it. I'm the first one to say they, they know what to do. So first of all, accept that this is real and it's true. And, 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 I, and I'm not the one who figured it out. My mentor taught me this in 2000. When he told me to drop, he says, listen, your problem is you know too much about real estate. You're, t- you're overtrained. He says, you need to lose it. Forget it. He says, what I want you to study is human behavior. I want you to study human behavior and understand how humans work and how to connect with humans and, and understand where choice comes from. So first of all, just accept that and, and, and hope you trust me or I hope you've heard it from enough people right now that are doing it. Okay. Number two, where to go for it is, is really be committed to it. And I tell people this, you know, and, and it's pretty interesting. The things I share are not that complex and advanced. You go, he's basic. Well, you know, um, we want to sell people something, right? We want them to work with us. Well, you know, we, we were taught this long ago, no like and trust. So does your language, does your marketing, does your email, does your video, does your anything you put out, does any part of you demonstrate a process of what I call lowering someone's guard? In other words, getting them to know you. Because listen, everyone's guards up with strangers to a certain level. Some people are more open. But if you look at life and human interaction, Everyone has their guard up higher. Well, when a salesperson shows up, the guard's way up. And that's an objection that people don't talk much about. You know, how to overcome price, how to overcome list, um, commission split, how to overcome we want to wait, how to overcome this. How about if you really lowered their guard, understanding that the number one objection is sales skepticism. And people say, well, what do you mean? You know, well, I don't understand. Well, there's this or that. Well, I don't know. Go, go into the shoe store when we're allowed to again. And tell me what you say to the shoe salesman when he walks up to you to help you. I'm just looking. Sales skepticism, go pounce out to a car lot when this is done too, because rates are going to be 0%. Get a car for 40% off. But when you go to the lot, excited, knowing you're a buyer, tell me what you say to him. I'm just looking. So, so it's number one, you know, grab these principles. First of all, hopefully you'll accept it. And maybe, maybe you weren't accepting it when I just said it, but now you're hearing me, oh, this makes sense. Okay, so now really focus in on then getting people to know you, like, and trust you. Lower their sales skepticism, okay? Excuse me, lower their guard, which gets rid of sales skepticism. Understand this principle. You can't sell someone out of sales skepticism. It's an emotion, man. You can't. There's no script, yeah. Yeah, you can't objection handle someone out of it. Now, now, and I'm going to you know, use a phrase, but I want to preface this. I'm by no means, and I've shared this a million times, minimizing what we're going through. And and you know the story. I mean, my boxes from my home I was moving into, I'm impacted by the whole real estate part of it as a consumer. You are for real, man. I pay a lot of earnest money because Vegas is boomer bust. My Vegas friends may not like me saying that, but oh well. I have a, you know, um, I I have a child that's high risk. And so, so I am in this thing. With that said, well, we just had a cherry put on top of sales skepticism. And it's called uncertainty. So now you've got sales skeptic and uncertainty. And then what you've got to understand too, see, this isn't scripts and dialogues and you don't need them. If you understand behavioral things, you can show up as a human because you've got uncertainty and scales, sales skepticism. They're both emotions. No one can make a decision when they have an emotional block. So now what I need to do, well, now what you've got to do with, with, with uh, uncertainty is you've got to reassure people. So how are you going to reassure them? with a new script, dialogue, objection handler? No. So, so what I would say to you is, is A, you know, what do you need to do to shift? You know, here's the thought process you need to go to. Okay, so John, what's the, what's the tactic? The tactic, the number one simple tactic is stop, and this will be a basic principle you'll get again too, stop asking people, so what do you think? What are you thinking? 
Well, last time I checked, the heart chooses, the mind justifies. Last time I checked, buying a home or selling a home is an emotional decision. Well, then how come we're asking people, how do you think? Whoa, let's see, we've been doing it backwards. And so what I want to support people to do is just ask people how you feel. Dude, massive. That's Mic a, drop. <laughs> yeah. how, how, how do you feel? So, so my hope is that you'll do that. Now, there's a couple parts to it, and the questions coming up a lot is, I think also, Sydney, you've experienced this as a leader, and, and we, listen, we've all had call reluctance. We, we, all, we all have, and, and yet, you know, many of us that are in our spots we're in, we, we step through that doorway. And, and I think part of it has been, and that's why this time is and not just to, you know, I want to exploit the opportunity of, of, of the unfortunate situation. I want to grow in this time because, whoa, it's opened me up. I think a lot of, I don't know that people are lazy. I don't think people lack commitment or lack motivation. Everyone's committed to whatever's showing up. Everyone's committed. I used to say, you're not committed, and it still will slip out. Like, Wait a minute. No, no, no. Everyone's committed. They're just committed to whatever the result is. So if we can now look at why, do, why, why didn't agents make calls? Why didn't people make recruiting calls? Why don't this, why not that? Well, because a lot of the language felt it didn't unconsciously map to their belief system. It felt cheesy. It felt manipulative. We don't like being sold, Right. So now, now hopefully I'm bridging the gap with agents because what I want to do is get underneath. I don't want to get underneath. I don't want to go, why didn't you call more? Why don't you do this? No, what gets in the way? Can I remove the impediments? Well, think about this agents and leaders that are trying to get agents to do business. Well, um, each of you walks out on a, on a car lot. You don't like that sales pitch. That's why you say, I'm just looking. Each of you walks in a shoe store. You don't like the sales pitch. Well, so internally unconsciously you as an agent, you as a team leader that needs to recruit, you as someone that needs to prospect, you have a program running inside of you that has resistance to the sales language. Well, the walls just came down because you don't have to do it. And, and you know what's neat though? And this is what we'll see. What's pretty neat about it is that the people that don't, and, and, and I know, listen, I, I have great hope for all mankind, but I know human behavior. Many are going to use this, and I already have heard it today on some Zooms, well, but when can I start asking salesy language? You know, it's like, when can I pounce again is what they're really asking. Um, many are going to use it as a bridge. Okay, it's the only way I can communicate. They're going to revert back to old form. I'm going to tell you who's going to, and we've got friends in, in our group that, that started in 08 and 09, you know, and they're doing yeah. last time we checked, right? Sure, yes. Um, and, 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 and so... It, it, the ones that come out the other end of this really, really well are the ones that don't use this as the bridge to the gap, the bridge to the gap of the human connection maybe they didn't have, the bridge to the gap of the trust maybe they weren't building. And I'm not saying they're a liar. I'm just saying they sold people in and, 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 and we're really focused on, and I want everyone to write this down, what all the trainings had everyone focused in on is the the external decision process and the external decision process is someone getting us to make a decision versus the internal decision process where I self discover because someone's asked me the right questions because someone's counseled me because someone has allowed me to be heard versus talking at me. And what happens in the internal decisioning process, a, and B, during a heightened emotional time, I'm gonna tell you right now, agents and leaders, the person that stays in the most, the highest level of contact with people right now, um, that a reach out, that conversation today is worth 10 times more of what a reach out conversation was 60 days ago. I agree, man. So uh, it's, it's the people that will, capture this and go, oh, wow, yeah, this is really basic human principles. You know, human behavior is seek first to understand. Understand that nurture, and you've heard me say this a bunch lately, nurture doesn't mean ambush, because that's kind of what it meant in our business. Nurture means to care for, support, encourage. Understand then a second one that we don't hear a lot in real estate, but you've heard, we talk about a lot in our group is empathy. Um, empathy is not trained in a script. <laughs> um, empathy means to uh, co-experience how someone's feeling. Ah, good one. Co-experience. I really like that. 
and then become relatable in, in walking alongside them instead of being the real estate agent they have skepticism of, walking alongside them instead of being the leader that's trying to recruit them that they may already have fear of. Because here, here are the fears that we all need to remember, whether you're recruiting or, or you're working with, with a buyer or a seller, the fears that we have is A, we have a fear that we don't have the capability to make the right decision. That's the one fear. The second fear is making a decision that we will regret later. The third fear is the, the decision to do something different and being judged. Yeah. So how are you overcoming those things? Too, you know, so it's, um, it's really taking this down to allowing, um, I think what, ha what has happened in our industry is, um, you know, we, we buy stuff that sells, maybe not what works. Yep. Um, and, and I think that if, if people can really capture this and go back to and go, wow, these are basic principles that hopefully my parents taught me or, um, it, you know, someone that, that I looked up to in my life taught me. And I think if, if everyone carry that with, um, you, you know, you take a look at empathy and being relatable, you look at nurture, being caring for, encouraging and supporting. And then you look at the, the process of meeting people where they're at, entering the conversation going on in their head asking questions you know here's an interesting one um and if and, and i'm gonna bring up therapy to people and if you haven't been to a counselor or a therapist then you're a weirdo um so yeah true that because i've been plenty of times <laughs> i tell people i brag about my seven coaches but six of them are really therapists <laughs> coach just sounds cool um you know pay attention to this ladies and gentlemen and, and i think it's rather profound when we go to to uh, when we go to gain counsel or we reach out to someone, um, whether it's therapy or just something, uh, you look at a professional that's supposed to be the therapist. You know what they do? They ask you the right questions and then let you just speak through it and walk through it and 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 come to the discovery. We have the answer, and and that's the internal decision process. A therapist that moves us from the place we were in. Sure, they'll they'll do some facilitation. But what we really want to do is we want to be heard. And, and I think it's important for us to, and that's part of the, this process, is if you bridge therapy, listen, you are a therapist. You, you are moving someone, you know, a therapist moves us from point A to point B, hopefully. The real estate agent or a leader moves us. We're at point A. We're in the escape and arrival business. And the escape and arrival, an agent that's not being productive wants to be productive. They want to escape where they're at. They want to join a team, a leader, or a brokerage where they can arrive. And do better. An individual real estate agent that's not being, you know, doing good and, and, and you know doesn't want to change somewhere, but wants someone to coach them or guide them. They want to escape where they're at. Same with leaders. And so, if we can really focus on allow people to express the things that maybe you don't want to hear, because the mistake that we make is we move so fast and go, yeah, but let them express it. Because if you if you if you allowed pause, well, you know, the market really scares me right now. Um, Vegas is boom or bust. I don't, I don't know what I want to do. Well, yeah, but the interest rates are, well, you didn't even give them an opportunity. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like with my situation, I have an opinion of where the price is going to end up of the new home I was buying. I've also shared with you candidly, I'll pay dramatically more than what I think it's worth when it hits a certain spot because I know I'll be there forever. And so, yeah. you know, I'm the guy that will, I'm not going to pay a ridiculous price because I just saw already someone who was smart that's chasing the ball downhill. You can chase the ball downhill in pricing or you can be in front of it. They set the market. I just saw one go in 48 hours in the jumbo. And you know, jumbo isn't just going off the shelves right now. Yeah, no. I just watched a jumbo priced home go that, you know, was around the corner from when I was buying. It's like, oh my. I would have been smoked. <laughs> wow. But, good, but you made the right call. I, I think there's a price that I would pay for mine based on my family situation. See, those are the things. I, I, I'm, I'm paying for two houses. My daughter's over there. We need to be in one place. And the baby and her are moving in. I can't put a price on that. Um, I'm going to be there forever. My work environment that, you know, I work from home. So allow people to express. Just ask and listen. Yeah. No, that's good advice always, man. I think people forget, um, you know, I was telling someone yesterday, like, this is a good opportunity to practice your listening skills, yeah. right? Um, so 
to get kind of to like the tactical to close it out because uh, I know you have to go. Sure. Um, agents out there and leaders out there who need to make a dollar now. What would you advise them to do? You know, because uh, you know, like we just said, seventy percent of people don't have a thousand bucks in their pocket. Who knows where these stimulus checks are? Because I've been calling my banker all damn day. Let me tell you. Um, but yeah, so. I I'm trying to threaten. Hey, Wells Fargo, I'm going to pull money out of the bank. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like I should be talking to Wells Fargo right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's another story. So he, 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 here's what I would do. You know, I was misleading people a week ago two weeks ago, I was telling people to double down. That's not enough. I think you need to triple down. I think that, um, and, and at the same time, I don't want to compromise what I've shared with people too. Oh my gosh, what a balance of the two, because the number one thing before that is taking care of your head, your heart, your body, the best way you can, because no matter what, what we know, because those things affect our emotions. And, and, and if those are out of whack, we can't show up. I think it's triple down. I think it is reach out to as many people as possible. Like, like if you were making 20 calls, the, the new standard is, you know, I was talking to a couple teams today that had a minimum standard as far as reach outs are concerned and they've doubled and tripled or, and, 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 and not being heartless and not caring, but they don't do someone, I'm not doing anyone a service as a coach. Um, I'm not doing anyone a service as a leader. If I don't share with them, you know, the heightened level you got to go. So number one, Double down on every single activity that can get you connection with a human being and just check in and see how they're doing. Guess what? You're a real estate agent. A real estate sales, the housing is part of the economy that people are maybe a little curious about. Naturally, they're going to ask you and so just share with them. That's one, reach out. Number two, we all know this, social media traffic's up 50%. Here's what I don't think a lot of people know. Advertising by corporate America is down 40%. The news feed is waiting for you to own it. Uh, number three is that uh, here's what I want you to know just from so, so it's it's being there um, on social media consistently. Number three, in what form? In video. And I'm going to tell you why. And this is where I'm going to be really brutal. Um, and again, this is where it's all coming, you know, it's all coming to a head. And, and, and I hope this is really profound for people to get is this is. You know, I'll ask a rhetorical question. Does anyone think the consumer's level of tech savvy went up in the last 14 to 21 days beyond where it was? How many, how many consumers never knew what Zoom even was? Okay. So what does that mean? What it means is you better, if you are at a pause in using certain technologies and vehicles um, with love, uh, you're gonna, you need to make a choice because you'll get left behind. Because here's what's happened. The market's the message. I'm the messenger. You're the messenger. But here's what the market, the market's the bad guy, not me. So what's the market saying? The consumer is much more tech savvy. When the yep. consumer gets more tech savvy, it changes their expectations. And you operate, you know, at a high level in your relationship with Zillow. And you know, I mean, the expectations that you have in that relationship, and, and that's why you have it, because you deliver. <laughs> well, guess what? Whether Zillow or not, I don't care. The consumer's expectation has just gone up. You know what I think? I think the, the consumer may not ever want to meet with you until they actually have to write something because guess what? Someone else did a Zoom buyer consult with them. They didn't have to come and meet for coffee or come in the office and actually toured some homes in the first meeting. They nailed it all. Um, the listing presentation may not take place at the home all the time because the seller walked around like they have been doing and like they're going to tell their friends that they walked around on FaceTime showing you the home and they listed it that way. I mean, yep. so, so what I would say is reach out consistently, be active on social media at the highest level, educate and inform, educate and inform. And what educating and inform, but I need to ask, well, you don't need to ask because here's what's going to happen is if you tell stories in your educating and informing, tell stories of what is happening, be the news, Tell stories of what's happening, how homes are selling in virtual open houses and be someone that does it. Tell people how homes are being shown virtually um, and people are making buying decisions and be able to do it. Understand that technology. Because what you're going to do is you're going to pull out the people that maybe were paused that weren't being educated by someone else. Someone was just saying buy or sell, buy or sell. 
But the, what they didn't do is they didn't lower the uncertainty and reassure them. So the final piece is reach out, be on social media, use video massively, be the information portal. I think from a true tactical space, I just gave this to a team last week. This is, so here, here, here's your little system right now. A, what I would do is I would reach out to everyone, reach out as many, you know, I remember cold call, cold call, FISBOS expires, door knocks. It was every day. That was my life 32 years ago. I'm old. <laughs> but what I would do today is I'd sit down with my headset on and I would dial for dollars. How are you? How's your family? Is there anything you need to support you personally? I do think that you can enter the um, information about real estate conversation more so now. I'm not saying this is normal, but I say I think there. I, I'm noticing a settling, if you will, in the unsettling that we have. But you don't need to, because if you do your job and every 10 days you do a quick little one or two minute update of the marketplace, and then the next day, so in the morning you go in and all those people that you did a personal check in. Hey, it's John. Just want, thanks. It was great talking to you. So you know who it is. It's queued up, and you send by text. Um, it was great talking to you um, yesterday. Glad things are going well. And again, if there's anything we do to support you personally, you know, one of the questions people are constantly asking me is, but how's the market going? So I just want to give you some stats and I'll keep you in the loop. It, you know, and if you'd like to, every 10 days, I'm going to do this. If this was valuable, text me back and say, hey, yeah, keep me updated. If not, that's cool too. That's it. If, if, if you do that alone, I think you're going to, you're going to shine. You're going to shine. And if someone gets offended by that, well, a, understand people are very sensitive right now, but B, you know, listen, are, are you going to let a few people, are you going to let your childish concerns over someone judging you get in the way of your mission? That's the question. Dude, so much good stuff. Last question. Uh-oh. And, and this is a fun one. Where's the first place that you're going for fun, our travel, once you can, once the quarantine is lifted? Where are you going, my man? probably skiing or something I no guess. it's too late man i am i'm going straight i'm going straight to hawaii big island of hawaii and actually going to go spend time with my coach and mentor of 14 years cool She's out there. Mm -hmm. i'm going right there so i wish i could sounds like a good trip yeah it'll be cool well man thank you so much for your time i appreciate you always this was so good I know our listeners and viewers, not watchers, right? <laughs> viewers are oh, going to get Oh, that English. Yeah, correct me on that one, too. The grammar police. I know. <laughs> right on, brother. Thank you That's so much. Sad. So what do you think? John always has a great, different insight, and it's really helped my business. I hope it helps yours. If you did like it, share it with a friend. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube. And we'll see you next time on The Hustling Agent.